The pull-up is one of the best exercises for adding muscle mass to your back and arms. Other than the push-up, it's one of the most common exercises used to test overall upper body strength. And getting stronger at pull-ups will improve your power output with almost all other upper body exercises. That's why it's used everywhere ranging from gymnastics all the way to the army. However, the problem is that many people can't even complete just one full rep, let alone perform multiple reps. That's why today I'm going to show you exactly how to do more reps of pull-ups than you ever could before, and as long as you follow the five simple steps that I'm about to go over, you could even go from zero to ten pull-ups in a relatively short amount of time. First we have to cover some basics because even though pull-ups look pretty straightforward, there's some muscles that are highly involved in this movement that most people overlook. Yes, of course, it is important to strengthen your back and your biceps. However, you probably don't know that if you have a weak core, it'll be nearly impossible for you to do multiple reps of pull-ups. This can be seen in a 2018 study where researchers looked at which muscles were most highly activated during the pull-up. And as expected, the biceps, lats, and the mid and lower traps were highly engaged. But the big surprise was the fact that the rectus abdominis, also commonly referred to as the six-pack muscle, was even more highly activated than the back or the biceps. This was the case for all the participants, including the ones that could not do a total of 10 pull-ups, as well as those that could do more than 10 pull-ups. In terms of muscle activation, the researchers found that the abs were actually activated the most, followed by the biceps, then the lats, and finally the traps. So if you want to improve your pull-ups, it's absolutely crucial to have a strong enough core which brings us to our very first step, and that's to strengthen the muscles that make up your core in a way in which that strength can translate over to pull-ups. And what I mean is, doing a bunch of crunches is not necessarily the best route to get stronger at pull-ups. You see, your core primarily has a stabilizing function during the pull-up. That's why to maximize carryover to the pull-up, it's best to strengthen your abs in a static fashion, such as by doing planks, or ab wheel rollouts. So right away, I want to give you guys a progression model that you can use to build up the required core strength that you need for pull-ups. As long as you can hold each exercise for at least 60 seconds, you'll most likely have enough core strength to perform 10 pull-ups. First is the beginner version of a plank known as the kneeling plank. Here you'll place your elbows on the ground and hold the plank position, except you'll be on your knees, maintaining a straight line from your upper back to your hips to the back of your knees. Next is the kneeling side plank. Here you'll lay on your side with one elbow propping your upper body up, then you're going to stack both knees on top of each other and raise your hips off the ground so that your bottom knee, hip, and shoulder are in a straight line, and then you're just going to hold that position. After you're able to do 60 seconds of each of those exercises, you'll want to progress to a regular plank, which is going to look just like the plank on your knees, except you're now going to be up on your toes, maintaining a straight line from your heels to your upper back. Then we're going to do the same thing for the side plank. So we're going to come up off the knees and get up on our feet, holding the position in the same way. Once you can hold each of those for 60 seconds each, you're going to progress by putting your feet up on a platform and performing a decline plank, which is done the same exact way as a regular plank, except your feet are now elevated. And finally, you'll finish off with a long lever posterior pelvic tilt plank. This is going to look just like a regular plank, except instead of having your elbows directly under your shoulders, you're going to walk them forward a few steps, and you're going to focus on flexing your abs while holding the plank. It helps to pretend that you're trying to bring your elbows to your feet. This will naturally tilt your pelvis backwards. So I want you to perform these exercises at the end of every pull workout with about a minute break in between each 60 second round. Training your abs at the end of your workout instead of the beginning is better because fatiguing your core before doing other exercises that require your core strength, like pull-ups for example, reduces your performance with those other exercises. So you're going to try to progress through each of these until you're at the point where you can do a long lever posterior pelvic tilt plank for at least 60 seconds. Once you're there, you'll most likely have enough core strength to perform 10 reps of pull-ups. And if you want to get your core even stronger, you can add a weight and place it above your hips to make your planks even more challenging. But next is step two. So aside from the isometric core exercises, the primary exercises you want to focus on during the first phase of your pull-up journey are going to be the kneeling lat pulldowns and dead hangs. Both are excellent for laying the foundation for becoming great at pull-ups. And you might be wondering why not perform the lat pulldown seated instead of kneeling. Well, even though the regular seated lat pulldowns are often recommended and they can inadvertently help improve pull-up strength, the problem is that research shows there's only a limited relationship between seated lat pulldown strength and pull-up performance. 
One potential reason for this is because when performed seated, the exercise doesn't activate the core to a high enough extent. And as I just mentioned, a strong enough core is essential for being good at pull-ups. Oddly enough, that core limiting factor doesn't hold true for kneeling lat pulldowns. One study found that core activation is significantly higher during kneeling lat pulldowns when compared to seated lat pulldowns, especially amongst people that can't do 10 full pull-ups. The researchers also found that between all the exercises they tested, the muscle activation patterns of the kneeling lat pulldown was the most similar to the regular pull-up. That's why it's such a great exercise for strengthening the muscles necessary to perform the pull-up. So if you're struggling with pull-ups, I recommend that you start doing kneeling lat pulldowns for five sets of 10 reps twice per week. And I want you to try to increase the weight you're using over time. Once you complete five sets of kneeling lat pulldowns, I want you to rest for three to five minutes and then move on to dead hangs right afterwards. As the name implies, you're simply hanging onto a bar for as long as possible. When doing this, make sure you use a pronated grip with your palms facing forward away from your body because that'll have the most carryover to your pull-up performance. Not only will this exercise help improve your pull-ups, but it's also gonna help you improve your grip strength, which is often another weak link that can prevent you from being able to do pull-ups effectively, especially if you're a beginner lifter. So the goal is to do three sets of dead hangs for as long as you can. Ideally, you wanna work your way up to being able to hang for at least 40 seconds. Remember to rest at least three minutes between each set, and once you're able to hang for longer than 40 seconds, you could progress to scapular pull-ups. With this exercise, you're still hanging from the bar, but the difference is that you're gonna pull your body up without actually allowing your elbows to bend. This small additional movement will increase lower trapezius activation, which will further benefit your pull-up strength. So I want you to do the kneeling lat pulldown in combination with either dead hangs or scapular pull-ups twice a week for at least three weeks before moving on to the next step, which is to start doing eccentric pull-ups and inverted rows. For the eccentric pull-up, you're gonna place a bench either in front or on the side of a pull-up bar. Then step on the bench, grab the pull-up bar, bring your chin above the bar, step off the bench, and lower yourself down as slowly as possible. Once you get to the bottom, don't try pulling yourself up. Simply step back up on the bench and repeat for reps. We're gonna do this exercise for five weeks, aiming for a certain number of reps each week. So on week one, I want you to aim for 30 reps. Week two, 40 reps. Week three, 50 reps. And by week five, I want you to try to get 60 reps. As long as you can control the movement in a way in which the eccentric phase of the exercise lasts for at least three to four seconds, you're gonna count it as one rep. Otherwise, if you drop way too fast, it doesn't count as a rep. The goal is to try to do as many of these reps in a row as you can. Whenever you can't lower yourself down slowly enough to count at least three seconds, rest for about two minutes and then perform your next set. You're not finished until you reach your total required rep target for the workout. Again, we're gonna do this twice a week, and like I said, we'll also be doing inverted rows afterwards, since it's an excellent exercise to strengthen the muscles involved in the pull-up, while also teaching you proper stabilization and control over your core. Inverted rows are relatively straightforward. You're just gonna rack a barbell, grab it with an overhand grip, walk your feet forward until you're under the bar, and row yourself up until your chest touches the bar, and then repeat for reps. Keep in mind that the higher you rack the bar, the easier the exercise will become, and the lower you rack it, the harder it'll become. You'll want to perform this exercise twice per week for four sets of 10 to 12 reps. After that, once you've already built a solid strength foundation with the first three steps that I just outlined, I want you to move on to step four, which is the band-assisted pull-ups. This is an exercise variation that's the closest you can get to a real pull-up. You'll wanna have a couple different bands with varying resistance levels, ranging from very light to very heavy. I'll include a link below for a cheap band set that you can get delivered to your house from Amazon. But when first starting out, you'll wanna start with the tightest band. Once you can do 10 reps with that band, move on to the second tightest band for your next workout. Once you can do 10 reps of that, move on to the third tightest band, and so forth. The goal is to do five sets of band-assisted pull-ups twice per week, every week, and your primary focus should be on increasing the number of reps you could do during the first set of the exercise. For example, let's say that you did seven reps on your first set during your last workout. This means the next time, you'll wanna to try to do at least eight reps. Now for your other sets, you don't need to track your performance so closely. Instead, simply try to do as many reps as possible. Remember to rest long enough between each set so that you can ensure peak strength and performance on each set. The exact time that's required varies between person to person, but aim for at least two to three minutes of rest between sets. 
Once you're able to do 10 reps with the lightest resistance band, you can move on to our last and final step, which is to work up to 10 pull-ups with just your body weight. At this point, you should most likely be able to do five to eight reps with your body weight. So just keep progressing in the same way that you did during the last phase with the resistance band. So you're gonna try to do one more rep on the first set of each of your pull-up workouts until you can complete the 10 reps. Now, as you get past six, seven, and especially eight reps, you could try adding resistance by strapping a weight to your body. Even strapping a 10 pound plate can lower your reps from eight to only four or five. But by getting used to lifting the extra weight, you'll get much stronger faster and regular body weight pull-ups will begin feeling a lot easier, helping accelerate your progress towards that 10 rep mark. That about wraps it up guys. I really hope this video has helped you out and that you take action and follow these steps to break through your pull-up plateau and hit 10 pull-ups in a row within the next few weeks. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon. Also, as always, I wanna remind you that getting stronger and building muscle isn't just about your training, but it's also about what you're doing in the kitchen. So if you wanna take the next step and you wanna get a scientifically proven solution for building the maximum amount of muscle and getting lean as fast as possible in the next few weeks, then head on over to my website and check out my challenges and programs. Not only will your program lay out exactly what you should be eating as your metabolism adapts and changes, over the weeks, but it'll also teach you advanced training concepts like undulating periodization, reverse pyramid training, and much more to help you break through plateaus, get stronger, and build more muscle. There'll be a full video exercise library, a customizable diet based on your body, and there'll of course be a coach there to guide you through the entire program and answer any questions. To find out more, you can click the link below in the description, or if you want more personalized one-on-one -on -one help, you can visit my website directly at gravitytransformation.com. I'll see you guys soon.